What's going on guys? In this video, we're going to create a GraphQL API on AWS using Amplify. AWS Amplify is a cloud-based platform and a framework that includes a command line interface to generate the GraphQL server and client code, taking a GraphQL schema as the input. With AWS Amplify, we can deploy serverless backends, not only with GraphQL, but also with REST APIs. Some other features provided by AWS Amplify are authentication, analytics, storage, data synchronization, push notifications, and more. Some of the AWS services that Amplify is going to integrate to build our GraphQL API are AWS AppSync, CloudFormation, S3, Amazon Cognito, DynamoDB, and AWS Lambda. Remember to subscribe to the channel and let's get started. This is the AWS Amplify console. We haven't created any applications yet, as we can see here. So let's go to the terminal and let's start working with the Amplify CLI to create the backend with GraphQL. I'm going to create a new folder, Amplify GraphQL. Let's enter to that folder. And first we need to install the CLI, npm install minus g at aws-amplify slash CLI. Okay, so the Amplify CLI has been successfully installed. Here are some links to access to the documentation. Our Amplify frontend could be written in JavaScript for web, or we can also create an Android application or an iOS application. And now let's configure the Amplify CLI. So I need to run Amplify configure. Okay, first is going to ask to sign into the AWS administrator account. I'm already logged in, so I'm going to click on enter. I'm going to select the region. I'm going to select US East one. I'm going to create a new user. I'm going to call it Amplify. And this is going to redirect us to the IAM console where we're going to create this new user. I'm going to click on next. I'm going to assign administrator access. I'm going to review it. I'm going to create the user. And here I need to grab the access key ID and the secret access key. Okay, let's go back to the terminal. Here I'm going to press on continue. And here I need to enter the access key ID and the secret access key. Okay, here I can assign a profile name. I'm going to keep the default profile name and we are good to go. We have our user successfully created and now we have the credentials to use the Amplify CLI and generate all the resources in the cloud. Okay, now if we go to Amplify help, we're gonna see all the different commands. Let's zoom out this a little bit. Okay, let's run the init command to initialize a new project. So Amplify init. I'm going to give the same name for the project. I'm going to create a new environment. I'm going to call it dev. I'm going to use Visual Studio code and I'm going to use JavaScript. I'm not going to use any front end framework. I'm going to keep that path for the source directory. The same for the distribution directory. And I'm going to give the default com build command and the default start command. I'm going to use the default AWS profile. And this is going to create all the resources in the cloud for our application. Okay, now if we go to the Amplify console, we should see the new application. Yes, our Amplify GraphQL application. And here is the backend environment. And here is the front end environment. We can connect, for example, our Bitbucket repo or GitLab or GitHub repo to our application. And we can deploy the application using this repo. Let's go back to the console. And now we can start working on our GraphQL API using this command, amplify add API. So let's run that. Amplify add API. And here we can select GraphQL or REST. We're going to select GraphQL. The API name is going to be GraphQL. Here we can select the authorization type for our API. We can use API key, 
an Amazon Cognito User Pool, IEM, or OpenID Connect. I'm going to select API key. Let's say API key. How many days from now the API key should expire? Let's say 10 days. Do you want to configure advanced settings? No, I'm done. Do you have an outdated GraphQL schema? No. Do you want a guided schema creation? Yes. And here we can select either a single object with fields, for example, a to-do object with ID, name, and description, or we can select a one-to-many relationship, for example, a blog. We have a blog that has multiple posts, and then each post may have multiple comments. So we're going to select that one, one-to-many relationship. And do you want to edit the schema now? Yes. This is going to open the Visual Studio Code. And here we have the schema where we have a blog. This blog has a list of posts and each post has a list of comments. And if we want to use API keys to access our API. We need to add auth and we need to allow public access like this. And I'm going to copy this here and here. Okay, let's go back. And here I'm going to continue. Okay, now if I run Amplify Push, it's going to build all the local backend resources and it's going to provision those resources in the cloud. I'm going to run it, Amplify Push. And this is going to show me the category of the resource that is an API, the resource name that is GraphQL, the operation that is basically creating the API, and the plugin that is going to be AWS CloudFormation. CloudFormation is going to be the service that is going to create all the resources. So I'm going to enter yes. Okay, and now the CLI is going to ask if I want to generate the code for our GraphQL API. I'm going to enter yes. And I'm going to select JavaScript. I'm going to keep it as it is. Do you want to generate, update all possible GraphQL operations, queries, mutations, and subscriptions? Yes. I'm going to keep it as it is. And this is going to generate all the client code and the server code and resources. So it's going to run the CloudFormation stack. It's going to generate all the required resources. It's going to create a couple of tables on DynamoDB. We're going to see that in a second. Okay, in the meantime, if we go to Visual Studio Code, we're going to see here in the backend, we're going to see here, we're going to see the resolvers. These generated code are basically Velocity templates. Velocity is a template engine that AWS uses, for example, in API Gateway. And here we also have the stack definition for CloudFormation. And what else we have? We have some other configuration, team provider, the roles, and different metadata that is part of the configuration of our app. Okay, now we have our backend ready. We have this endpoint that we're going to use to execute our GraphQL mutations and queries. And this is the API key to authenticate the requests. And now if we go to the AWS console, and if we go to DynamoDB, and if we go here to the tables section, we're going to see that Amplify created these three tables where it's going to store the data. We have this blog table that is going to include a list of posts. So we are going to have a reference from the post to the blog. And then we're going to have a reference from the comment to the post. We have the blog with a list of posts and each post with a list of comments. Let's go back. I'm going to grab this endpoint and I'm going to use it here in Postman. I'm going to replace this and I'm going to add an authorization header. I'm going to replace this by this one. I'm going to copy this. Okay, and now let's run a mutation. Let's create a new blog. If we go to the schema, here we need to find the create blog mutation, this one. So this mutation name create blog requires an input and the condition is optional. So 
I'm going to use this mutation here. And I'm going to pass just the name. As we can see here, the name is the only required field. So let's run this mutation. And here we have our blog created. If we go to DynamoDB, here, we're going to see that we have one record. Here we have one item with the name that we assigned. Let's go back. Now I'm going to create a new post and I'm going to use this identifier to connect the blog with the post. So I'm going to use this mutation and I need to pass this blog ID. So I'm going to use here a variable and the variable is going to be blog ID and the value is going to be this one. I'm going to paste it here. Okay, let's run this. And here we have our post. And here is also returning the blog as we specify here. It's returning the identifier of the post, the title of the post, and the identifier and the name of the blog. Okay, and now I'm going to create a comment. So I need to use this identifier to associate the post with the comment. Okay, I'm going to remove this and this is the mutation to create a comment where I'm going to pass the post ID and the content of the comment is going to be this string. And here, instead of passing a blog ID, I need to pass this post ID. And I'm going to replace this identifier with this one. That is the identifier of the post that we just created. I'm going to paste it here. And I'm going to run this. And as we can see here, we have the comment that has this content that we entered here. It has the post associated to it with the identifier that we specified here. And with the blog that we created. And if we go to DynamoDB, we're going to see we have the blog, then we have the post here, and then we have the comment that we just created here. Okay, let's go back and now let's run a query. Let's remove this. Okay, and let's add a query. And this query is going to return all the blocks, all the posts that are created for that blog and all the comments added to the post. I'm going to run this. And as we can see here, we get the blog that we created. We get the post that we created and the comment that is associated to that post. And here we can see that we specified these attributes, ID, name and posts. And that's what we get here, right? The identifier, the name, and the posts and within the posts we get this array of items and each the item is actually a post with an identifier a title and a list of comments with identifier and the content as we specify here that's all i have for today thank you guys for watching and i see you in the next video take care bye